everybody. Uh, recently I've had somebody ask me how to recreate this piece of art that I had done on my Twitch stream. Um, it's actually quite easy, so I decided to do a tutorial of it on here. Um, it doesn't have to be clouds, you can make yourself like a nice shape, you can like draw a flower, and then just outline that um, in in the black ink as I had on here, which I'll I'll go into as I'm doing it. Um, I guess I'll go into the material list to start with. Um, it's really nothing fancy. If you're going to draw like a specific shape, I su I suggest that you have a pencil and an eraser so you can outline the shape without uh, having to worry about it too much while you paint. I use this black India ink. Sorry, which side is it? I use black India ink to do the black outline parts or the sky behind the clouds in this case. I have a bunch of assorted, assorted alcohol-free markers for if I do need to outline something, if I want to make something that isn't just random shaped clouds, which that drawing was random shaped clouds, and I will be doing the random shaped clouds today. Um, some watercolor paper would be good. And I use is here. Uh, that is the new Soho series sketch. It's suitable for watercolor pen and color pencil. Um, if you don't have that kind of paper, it's not the biggest of deals. I very often don't do watercolor on the correct kind of paper, and it just kind of requires you, uh, you know, when you work with watercolor, your paper kind of curls a little bit. It just requires you to put it under something heavy for a few days, and it'll flatten itself right out, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. Same with uh, watercolors. I don't, like, I really don't have anything special. These are from the dollar store. This is from Curry's. It's an art store that we have in Canada. Um, I really like this design because they kind of like, they're very compact. So I, it's really easy for me to throw this in my backpack and actually go draw at a cafe or something. And uh, a lot of the little trays in it have a place to put some water, including the top has a little place to put some water. So they're also like really, really cheap. They were like $2, so I'm not super, super worried about like storing them incorrectly. They've just been like a no sweat kind of thing that I can play with, which I, I quite enjoy. Um, today I'm just going to do a small one. It's not even the correct kind of paper. Like, really, you don't have to worry about it. Um, for the stars that I had on there, this is the only thing that I think it might be difficult to obtain. Maybe you could use like whiteout, but I have this Windsor Newton uh, white ink, the 974 white. And I found this really, really nice Sennelier Argent O2 Silver. Um, it's really, really pretty. It's shellac based, so these are the only two things I say it might be hard to find. Maybe you could improvise with like glitter glue or just like uh, sparkles when your ink is wet. We'll stick to it. Again, like I don't think it has to be anything like too crazy. So, um,. I guess another thing that you're going to need are some brushes. Like, these are all just random brushes that I've acquired over my life. Like, nothing expensive or crazy, like either from the dollar store or like the cheapest brushes you can buy at your art, art store. I also have um, a little cup, like it can be anything, I've just filled it with a bit of water to wash my brushes as I go, which even then I'm not like super careful of. This is just like a really easy, like no worries kind of project, like no pressure. I think everybody can do something like this and it's a really good starting point. It makes you feel good, it's easy to do, 
you don't need a lot of expensive stuff, and it doesn't take a lot of time. I think that other drawing in total took me 45 minutes, um, and it was a much bigger piece, so yeah, that makes sense. So I've just uh, opened all of all of my uh, watercolors, and I will adjust the camera so that you can see what I'm doing on my hands. camera isn't that great. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, I should have done this first already, well I was gonna cut this, oh there's my scissors, I shouldn't use these but I'm going to because I'm dumb. cut those little frilly things off so that we don't have to uh, be getting those in the way. Um, okay, so something I like to do on this kind of drawing before anything, and I don't know if this is like something that really helps or if I'm just like weird, but I really like to, to like prime my paper by giving it a little bit of a coat of, of watercolor and, and water. I feel like it helps everything absorb more evenly. Um, it doesn't really matter if you just do water or if you have some sort of um, paint on there. I like to throw a little bit of paint on because I like my clouds to be a little bit darker actually, so I use a little bit of black. But I, I quite water it down is the thing. And anybody that really is painting on a surface like this should be careful that they can wash their, their ink off. Like, I know that mine washes off. I've painted on the surface many, many times. I kind of like made myself a little well, like a tiny well of uh, diluted black there just to make my life easier. Um, something that might help you guys is if you tape this down to your, to your table. I am a savage and I just don't care, so I didn't. So there, I've got the whole paper kind of saturated. I try to get, make sure it looks kind of even, so there's some like white spots at the top here. So I'm just going to make sure to get them. Okay, so that is nice and primed. So now uh, it doesn't really matter what brush you use, like depends how much of one color you're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna use this brush, it's kind of like a medium, medium sized brush for this paper. Might want to use a bigger one if it's a bigger paper. Sometimes I like to use this one if I'm really really looking for a lot of area. But since this is a quite small paper, I'm going to use this brush, and I, I don't really want my paper to be like super dry after priming it, really. I like to, I like to work wet. I know that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> so I guess I, I will choose a color I like. I really, really like having a lot of yellow in my art. It's just something that I like, but uh, you could make it so that your whole piece is just like green and blues or something whatever floats your boat really and there's no rhyme or reason. I like to use a lot of water so that it makes a nice like pattern and it's easier to blend the other colors in and I'm just gonna go like I didn't even wash my brush really I'm just gonna go onto the orange and start like putting that into there and I'm not not washing my brush when I go back for water I'm like unless I'm drastically changing colors I'm just doing a quick dip to get more water, not get rid of pr product or color, if that makes any sense. Now, I like this orange, but I don't think it's bright enough, and that is the downfall of using dollar store level stuff. And again, look, I've, I've just like gone over to the red, I'm not even washing my brush, I'm not doing anything crazy, and I'm going to blend that into there. 
it helps if your brush has a little bit more water on it so just take a like tap into the water and that helps everything kind of like blend in more like smoothly and nicely still nothing crazy yet. I still have not washed my brush really. I'm just going back and dipping to get more water. Um, paper will dry. It's like I'm not super worried about using too much water. Um, if you find that you're diluting the color too much, I would come back and just grab a bunch more of it, drop it into the area that you've wet. Um, if, if you have already had an area dry and it's like not that bright you can go back over it with the color um, for this kind of stuff I would recommend and I'm kind of remembering the the order of the rainbow a little bit at that time I washed my brush because uh, I went back to a lighter color so like it, it would be hard to see this yellow if I didn't wash my brush real quick Sometimes I find that I do have to do like a second coat of yellow to make it blend just because it is one of the lighter colors. Now I'm trying my best not to make sure, make, let the edges like dry out on this paint. It is a little bit time sensitive when you're working with watercolors because I find things just blend a lot easier if you don't let the edges dry out. Like see, it's much easier to blend into something wet. I like to do all the colors of the rainbow, but I'm sure there's there's like some of you that only really like like blues and purples. I could do one that's entirely blue and purple, and it would probably be easier the less colors you use, actually. So it's definitely something to think about. And I'm just going to come back in here and make sure some of these colors are blending nicely. Sometimes it helps to do uh, more than one layer on an area. And sometimes it helps to kind of like blend the two colors together, get a little bit of orange in that yellow. You see it already looks quite nice. I'm not going to be crazy worried about getting this yellow into the pink because it's kind of like a similar color and I really like how it's blended right there like I think it looks excellent and fun and kind of tie-dye um, yeah I really like how it's turning out so far and the other thing is you can mix colors so like if see I'm putting a little bit of the yellow with the pink and it's turning orange and that's that's another nice color combination the good thing that comes of this is that when you're doing things like the clouds they're, they're really random and I can pick and choose which areas I really like so maybe I've painted an area and I've accidentally blended some colors and it looks kind of like brown and yucky I could just be like nah I don't like that that part is just gonna be nighttime sky like that's not gonna be part of the clouds sorry and I'll just paint right over it. It's like really up to you. It's not set in stone. You can just do whatever you want. I like blending this green into the yellow here because it's like a good transition in the rainbow. But it can be tough because green and orange, eh, not so much. But you know, you can still get it done. You just uh, have to be careful. You have to use like a lighter color green, I find works better than a dark, especially for this kind of thing. And I mean, you could probably like, if you had a good budget or a lot more colors or professional stuff than me, you could find a green that would look a lot better here. But for me, this is just fine. I'm happy with it. It'll be okay. Oh, there we go. 
though, so I've, I've mixed some some blue with this green, and it's made a beautiful color, and I really, really like that. And I can see as this yellow is drying, we're going to need another area of yellow here, because it's kind of gotten lost in the orange, as, as yellows tend to do. This is the loveliness of not really washing your brush between uh, close colors. They, it helps you blend the colors quite a bit. I do appreciate that. And try not to make anything too like in a very like normal pattern like you can I guess if you want to but I think it looks better when it's random I like to it was starting to get away from being random it was looking like I was just following the colors of the rainbow there so I'm gonna have to mix that up and maybe put some yellow back there I think that'll look good I do think this dark this blue is quite dark a little bit green for this pink. I feel like it's going to overwhelm possibly, so I might mix it with some purple. And this is based on no knowledge or anything. I just like just improvising. I think that's what will look better right now in the spot. Now it also depends how vibrant you want your paper to be. Like if you want it more vibrant, don't add as much water or do more layers of your colors. And if you want it more pastel, you want to dilute your, your layers more, it'll look a lot better. I feel like it's getting very dark in this area and I'm not like a crazy big fan of it. Let's go for this lighter blue. You, you have to be a little bit more careful when using the light colors. They tend to get lost sometimes in the darker colors. You gotta wash your brush first and make sure that they're okay. See, I don't really like this area, so I'm just going to keep playing with it until it comes out with something that I like a little bit better. And if I can't fix it, it'll just become the night sky. Um, it's hard to tell when it's wet, because it does look quite a bit different when it's dry. Like, you could hate something when it's wet, or really like something when it's wet, and then it dries and looks completely different. I want to do an orange bit under here. Remember to go right to the edges of your paper. Even if you're going to be coloring it black because uh, there will be a little bit of a textural difference from the watercolor. Watercolor kind of gives your paper like a grainy kind of feeling. See, this is why you're probably supposed to use watercolor paper, because this is drying quite quickly. It's making it a little bit difficult for me to blend colors properly. You don't want to see hard edges like I have here, you know? color am I missing here? You could definitely use some red. I'm not a big fan of red in my art for some reason. 
but I think this piece could use some red. It's very vibrant. I think maybe in this corner I could throw some red. And if I don't like it, I'll just paint it black. Ozzy Osbourne uh, taught me that trick. That's got a little bit of a hard edge, so just going to flood the area with a bit of water. It'll help it blend. And when your paper's curling like this, your water might crawl to an area that you didn't expect. So just be sure to hold it down if you don't want it to do that. In this case, I don't really think it matters. I'm a big fan of yellow in my drawing, so I'm going to try to get some back up here, I think. That yellow has been sitting there with water on it, so it's really nice and rich. Just flooding the area here to help it all blend together. It makes a nice green on the border of blue so that it helps it blend in quite nicely. Put some more red into there. I think yellow is really, uh, sometimes it doesn't get its spot in the spotlight too often and I, I really do like how yellow looks in art. It's vibrant. It really catches the eye. Like I think this area was just looks wonderful here. I know that this area needs a little help. I think maybe some pink. I think uh, adding the lighter colors can really help tie the dark colors back together. If you're having uh, trouble with an area, it's much easier to add a lighter color slowly than it is to add a darker color because a dark color can quite overwhelm an area. I'm just going to wash my brush quite well and add a drop of water right here to fix some of the hard edges that are happening. Like I said, it'll help just uh, tie everything together nicely. And I do like that area quite a bit better now. Something I don't like is, is right here where I can see the hard edges drying. So that's from too much water at once being applied, which yes, I did do there a little bit. Yeah, I'm just trying to break up any hard edges. It's, it's not the end of the world if you have them. I just think in this type of drawing, I, I always aim for it to be as smooth as possible. Uh, I just like how that looks a little bit better. So now I just have to like solve this area. Um, I'm thinking maybe some more pink. always hardest to do at the end here because you have to solve for colors on all sides. It's a little bit like a puzzle, you know. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow up here careful because I don't really want to run it into the into this area too too much because I want to do a little bit of blue right here. 
don't want to get any more yellow into that blue. It's already giving off a kind of green that I don't want, so I want like a nice, rich, even blue right here. giving it more water to help it blend in to everything in its surrounding area. And I think I'll finish this off with purple because it is my one of my favorite colors and it can easily tie both of these colors in quite well. to add lots of water to it so it doesn't get any hard edges on either side. All right, and we have a pretty tie-dyed piece of paper. So I suggest uh, just leaving your brushes chill in the water. I'm gonna have to adjust my, myself here. <laughs> is falling asleep. So I'm just gonna give this like a few seconds to dry. It doesn't have to be like bone dry. Like maybe I'm just some horrible artist like doing everything wrong but I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Last time I didn't really wait for it to dry too much either and it was fine. So I've got my ink out. Now this stuff quite messy if, you, if you're not careful. Um, you know, I've stained a lot of stuff with it by not being careful. So just, it's waterproof, it's 100% carbon, it's very liquidy and runny. So yeah, just be careful. I see one spot on my painting is still quite shiny or two spots actually, which means they're still like quite soaked. So I, I'm going to just wait a few minutes on that and I'll see you in, in like a second because video magic. All right, so I've waited a few minutes. It's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for me to work on. Now, I've rinsed off my, my brush that I was using. I've kind of like painted my hand with it a bunch. It's the same brush. Um, I like this brush for smaller details. I don't really want to get a lot of water in my ink though. I, I feel like that's bad for the ink. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm probably not, so I'm just not going to do it. Um, I also have this bigger brush for kind of filling in bigger areas and I kind of already see some areas that I want to fill in so it doesn't matter there's no rhyme or reason it's just kind of like oh I don't really like this area and I think this shape would make a cool cloud um, I try to follow kind of like the natural pattern of the drawing since water patterns actually make really good shapes so sometimes I think it's good to follow that it looks quite good in my opinion when it comes to making cloud shapes so I'm just gonna pick a spot at random to start and it doesn't matter got my India ink quite soaked into my brush there's no like there's no laws to this I'm kind of using the brush sideways and kind of just like dipping and dabbing it down. Um, if you wanted to, if you saw a pattern you're very like set on and didn't want to like accidentally mess it up, you could take your pencil and kind of outline it. Me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and start because it'll be fine. I try to like remember the shape of clouds. I think 
personally, I think that it looks better when there is more black in the sky because, you know, it's very rare that you see this many clouds in one area. But I also think, I try to think what it would look like with ink over it before I do it because I think like this area would make like, it looks like the underneath of a cloud a little bit with the orange kind of making a shadow. So kind of take advantage of that and turn it into one. And I kind of just like try to outline a few clouds, a few things that I really like how it looks. And I don't make strokes with my brush because that's not how clouds look. Clouds kind of look rough around the edges a little bit and like bumpy and stuff. They're not smooth. I really like how this one looks and this one looks. Um, I'm probably going to paint this one out, I think. And if you don't like any of them, you can just even paint the whole thing. It's your drawing. Don't let anybody tell you, oh my god, I can't believe you've done that. This drawing is to make you happy. It's to make you feel good. Um, you can paint the whole thing black if that's what you want. You know what's under there. You know what you've done. So uh, I leave that completely up to you. I've totally done that myself. Um, okay, so I see this here. I'm trying to decide. I can't decide if I want to keep this. I think, yeah. I think this orange, kind of like yellow pink thing at the top will make a nice looking cloud. I don't want it to be too like normally shaped though, so I'm just gonna add some like texture to it. I don't really like this like purple area here. I'm probably going to get rid of a lot of it. Like it makes sense to have big black areas. Don't don't be afraid to go overboard with the black. It is supposed to be a night sky. At least this is like if you've maybe drawn something else like totally adhere to your lines. Um I was drawing a skull for this and then I decided, you know, like it might be best to just follow the exact tutorial that somebody had requested because maybe they really want to make clouds and I think if you're at the point of, uh, you know, making a drawing that you want to paint tie-dye like this in the background then maybe, I think, I think maybe you can figure that out. You seem like you're doing pretty well for yourself in that department. There's a, there's also like no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of like, I think the brush should go here. I think this would look cool. Like it's just completely random what I'm doing. I do like to have this like big black areas to show that they're actually clouds because, you know, sometimes that, I feel like that might be misconstrued there's not enough of the night sky. I also feel like clouds kind of stretch this way as opposed to up and down as much. I feel like they're quite flat at times, so I do try to make some areas that show that they're that shape. And I'm kind of just like dancing my brush. You gotta remember to detail the top, like the edges around the painting as well. It, it'll look funny if you just leave those like not detailed. And like this part was a little bit too wet. I added too much ink here and it kind of bled into the clouds, which is fine. It's not a big deal at all. Like, uh,. If you want, you can wait for the whole thing to dry and just hit that with the black paint. But really, it's just like super not noticeable. 
The only time you really have to wait for your painting to be like dry is when you start adding the stars. So I think I like how this looks. I think it looks pretty. It's got a lot of colors, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, again, I have to wait for it to dry so that I can do the next step, which I will be doing with this Windsor Newton white ink. And then on top of that, I like to add this Argent O2 silver for, from Sennelier. I got this at Michael's. Actually, I got both of them at Michael's. I got the black ink at Michael's too now that I look at it. Don't forget to cover your ink. You don't want it to dry out. Try not to leave it open very much. Um, something that I do recommend for this next step is to cover anything that is in this kind of like general area from you because you will be getting ink on that stuff if you don't do that. Like if you have a monitor right here, which I do, I was just covering it because the last time I did this, I got ink on my monitor, which was okay to scrub off, but would have been better if I didn't have to scrub it off. Like, it could have possibly harmed my monitor, and, like, I didn't know that until I scrubbed it off, so I wouldn't suggest finding that out the hard way. So I'm gonna just uh, fast forward to this being dry so that you can see the next part quickly. Alright, this looks like it's dried enough now. I see one kind of wet spot, but I'm not going to be super worried about it. So I've got a brush here. It's got kind of a long bristle. You might want to like do a test spot somewhere and see if this is going to work for you. I've got my white ink here. I'm going to do my test spot on a piece of paper I have right there and it looks good. So we're just going to flick paint onto this piece of paper and it's it's going to make stars and it, it looks already like really good. I know it's hard to see. But uh, you don't want too much paint on your brush. You want to kind of like wipe it, wipe off the edges or else it'll be like just big splotches of ink. I mainly like to concentrate these stars on the like black parts of the work. I mean, it doesn't matter if it goes over the clouds though. And again, don't forget to cover anything that's in front of your artwork. You don't want to get ink on. Um, this can be quite messy if you don't follow that rule, as I have done many, many times. At this point, I've just gotten quite good at not spreading ink everywhere, I guess. So if you think you can do that, then that's, that's up to you, but don't come crying to me when you got ink all over your stuff, you know? definitely just got some on my face, so uh, maybe also wear clothes that don't really matter if you get paint or ink on them, but I think most people do that before they take on a painting project like this. And again, we're getting some ink on the desk. Um, I know that I can clean it off quite easily from this desk. really takes like a perfect amount of ink. And it doesn't matter if you have bigger splotches and smaller splotches. Like when you look in the night sky, all of the stars aren't exactly the same size, so it'll be fine. And you want to make sure you get your edges too, because it kind of will look weird if you only have your, your dots on the inside of the painting. You want to be just consistent in your stuff. You don't have to hit it hard. You can tap it just gently. If you're tapping it gently and you're not getting splotches on off of 
the brush, it means you don't have enough paint. It's, it's a very magical amount. You have to be just right with the amount of paint that you have. You don't want to just do it all with your brush in one direction because you'll start to get straight lines and that doesn't look very like natural. It also helps if you turn your brush in the direction of like the area that you're trying to spritz. Because you can kind of control where these stars are going a little bit. So yep, I think that's enough stars for this piece. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to try to wipe it dry as much as I can. I'm also going to close my ink because I don't want it to dry out. This ink can get kind of expensive so taking care of it is, is really important. Um, I'm just going to wipe this off on a cloth I have here for wiping brushes off of it's really hard to get some stuff off the like ferrule of your brush sometimes. So I try to like mostly dry it off. I'm just like painting my hand with it a little bit. Um, this is how many stars I chose to have. If you want to have more or less, that's totally up to you. It's your drawing. You can do whatever you want. I should have done this before. I'm just going to move some of these out of the way because I am getting a little bit of ink on them and that is not ideal. Okay, um, now we can do the silver. I mean, the silver is not necessary. You don't have to use the silver ink. Again, it's the Sennelier ink. I got from, actually it wasn't a Michaels, it was, it was a Desaires because I was in Quebec. So yeah, I actually got this one from Desaires now that I think about it. And it's quite a beautiful ink. It is shellac based, so you do have to be quite careful what you get it on. It is even a little bit hard to get it off this desk, but um, a little extra elbow grease will do it. It looks really nice. Like it is just such a pretty colored ink. I need my camera to focus back on my drawing. Please camera. Hello camera please. Has it always been this blurry this whole time? Okay well. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing with my hand motions. One of these days I'll get a better camera set up. You will get some ink on your hands doing this, by the way. I don't know how like picky you guys are. I've just accepted it as a way of life and a part of my life at this point to have ink on my hands at all times. But if you don't want ink on your hands, I'm sure you can pick up some gloves and wear them instead. Or uh, wrap your hands in like a cloth. I just, I just don't care. I think having ink on my hands uh, makes an interesting conversation piece. You don't have to go crazy with these ones. You already have a lot of white. You just want that like extra hint. Um, I've seen people even use like nail polish for this, you know, like you don't have to have all the exact right tools for art. And just like that, like I think I think that's enough. I'll show you the drawing. I don't know why my camera is not focusing well. And look at my hands. Yes, I did get some paint on my hands, but I think it makes it a little bit more two-dimensional, or sorry, three-dimensional. <laughs> I'm just going to be sure to wash my brush real quick, especially with this ink, because it is shellac based and it will destroy your brush if you don't take care of it. So yeah, that's it. Um, as you notice, the painting is quite crinkly, and I find this happens whether or not I use um, watercolor paper. 
I find that once this is dry, you can give it a tiny spritz or even no spritz at all if you're scared because this is watercolor. You don't want it to like get messed up. Um, you can give it a tiny little spritz of water or kind of like steam it with your iron a little bit just gently and and lay it under something heavy. I don't even do that. I just kind of lay it under something heavy. I wait for it to be dry ish like if I run my finger over it nothing's gonna smudge and I set it under my school textbooks because you know what else would I be using those for at this point and I paid so much money for them they might as well come to some use so uh, after like a day or two this piece will be flattened or I just close it in a book and I put it on a bookshelf if it's small enough and it'll be flattened it's just like flattening like a plant or like some leaves from outside. So yeah, I hope you liked my tutorial and hopefully if you guys have any other ideas for tutorials for my art, I can help you with that. Just leave it down in a comment below. Thanks for watching.